Hey everybody, my name is Saad Bashin and I'm a senior solution engineer here at Snowflake. I'm excited to be able to talk to you today about Pandas on Snowflake and how you can be able to build out more secure, efficient, and scalable process just by using Pandas and not having to change any single line of code. So really excited to talk to you about that today. Before we get into Pandas on Snowflake, let's refresh on what Pandas is how developers use it, and what are some of the key challenges they face that Pandas on Snowflake can solve. Many of you probably have heard of or use Pandas data frames in your work. Needless to say, Pandas is one of the most popular data science tools today, and it's a great data analysis library for Python that comes with a rich and convenient set of functionalities that let users play around with their data and get quick feedback and prototyping. You know, data teams love it, and I love it because it's flexible and expressive, which makes it easy to do quick prototyping and experimentation. It's also super intuitive and easy to use. And it's also widely adopted. In fact, it's the number one most popular data science library for Python and has over 5 billion total downloads to date. But there's an issue. Pandas doesn't scale when it comes to big data. And let's take a look at why. For you as a developer, Pandas just works, and we really have to think about what goes on underneath the hood. But what Pandas is actually doing is that it's an in-memory data structure so that all the data that you're working with needs to fit in your data memory. And it's also single-threaded, meaning that all the processing leverages one of the CPUs that you have. What that means is that when we start working with enterprise-scale data, not just megabytes and gigabytes, that picture starts to break down. Because Pandas requires that everything has to fit in memory, so when you exceed that limit, it leads to disruptive out-of-memory errors. So trying to do processing on megabytes of data versus terabytes of data, it's just not going to be as easy. And it's because it's single-threaded, so things can get really, really slow when you operate in large data sets. So even if you had more cores on your machine, it wouldn't be able to fully utilize the resources available. This leads to wasted compute and also costs. So now we know that Pandas doesn't scale. Let's dig deeper into what this means in terms of the context of data teams and organizations. When we went to talk to data teams around the world that use Pandas, we found that typical experimentation to production can take six plus months for Pandas. And here's why. Many organizations use Pandas for their initial prototyping and data exploration as new business requirements and data comes in. And data teams love it because of all the reasons we talked about earlier, but that prototyping is often happening on his laptop or a single shared workstation where the data team can really quickly test out and experiment in an agile way. So they may, may be able to just take a subset or a small sample of data and do their exploration there without scaling it larger to the enterprise level data. And that's what happens when you have to look at more data, maybe you're testing out or productionalizing on a large sample, this picture breaks down. And as we saw earlier, Pandas, the tool you're using for this initial stage, doesn't exactly scale. So when we go from prototype to production, this becomes a very time consuming process of having to constantly rewrite these workloads into a more scalable framework. As one example from a large mature data organization we spoke with, they had told us that it took them over six months to translate just one of their Pandas workloads in Spark just to be able to operate on more data in production. So it's an incredibly frustrating and a waste of precious developer time. And the story doesn't end here. Iteration is key to working with data. So even if you've gotten to that final point where you've rewritten your initial workload in a more scalable way, things will break and they break all the time. Bugs get introduced, models need to be tweaked, and that rewrite process is not a one-time cost, but a constant overhead that makes it difficult to maintain and debug your for workflows in an agile way, which can be incredibly frustrating and lead to long development and feedback cycles. So what I hope you take away from this is that all of these points of friction of having to rewrite our code just to tune up this knob of being able to work with more data starts to add up in terms of human time and development costs. And this becomes a very real challenge. Introducing Pandas on Snowflake. And we recently introduced the general availability of this feature, which lets you run your Pandas code directly in Snowflake without having to change a single line of code. 
you can get the same Pandas native experience you know with the scalability and security benefits of Snowflake. When we ran benchmark comparisons on representative workloads, it showed the Pandas and Snowflake can scale up to a terabyte of data running in less than 50 seconds. In cases where Pandas, on the other hand, completely runs out of memory. We've also been able to show up to 30 times faster performance on a 10 gigabyte scale. And as a glimpse into what we're doing behind the hood, it's kind of represented here where, where a user will be able to input, you know, that pd.concat logic as an example of how somebody would use pandas to combine two data frames horizontally. And what that does is we actually translate that into SQL and run it on top of Snowflake. So we're essentially just translating it into SQL and using the distributed nature of our platform to be able to use additional nodes and clusters. So that speeds it up um, and you get results way quicker than you would using native pandas. And what we'll be able to see in our demonstration today, a lot of the key points of why Snowflake on pandas just works so much better. And in the demonstration, we'll see how pandas on Snowflake will enable developers to continue to work with their data by writing pandas code. But we just take your code and automatically compile it to run on Snowflake, so you get the benefit of distributed pandas at scale. In the demonstration, you'll see that there's no more, no more painful out-of-memory errors, security concerns from pulling data out of Snowflake, or hand-optimizing or tuning your workload to comp and compute infrastructure to run pandas at scale. And developers can leverage their familiar pandas API which will free them up to focus on optimizing for business outcomes and put, putting more pipelines into production. So let's go into the demo. Alrighty, let's get straight into the demonstration. So we are inside the Snowflake UI, where you can see we're inside a Snowflake notebook. It is one of the options to be able to use both Python and SQL inside a unified platform. And you can be able to use this notebook to be able to run Pandas on Snowflake, or you can use, an, use the IDE of your choice, whether it's in Jupyter or VS Code, and be able to run this there just by using the Snowpark package. So before we get started, the one thing we want to do is inside Snowflake notebook, we are able to actually configure um, packages inside of our environment. So we're just going to be able to add in this modin package that was acquired by Snowflake in the last year, year or so to be able to run more distributed processing on Snowflake using Pandas. So that's the only other requirement to be able to just do. And all of this can also be found in, in the Snowpark Pandas Quick Start on Snowflake's page. So let's get started with Pandas on Snowflake. Just to recap a little bit, it's going to be able to let developers run their Pandas code directly on their data in Snowflake. We are not going to be exporting this data out and reading it and doing transformations and pushing it back in. This is all these operations are going to happen directly on the data inside Snowflake. So it's pretty familiar with exactly how we were using it before in native pandas, and we're using import modin.pandas as PD, but everything else, the same syntax and everything will be able to follow just as usual. One thing we'll want to do is to be able to create a Snowpark session. And that's going to require an active session object to connect your data in Snowflake. You just want to also want to make sure that before you even get to this notebook stage and being able to use Snowpark, that you have the correct read and write permissions on that table when creating that session. Everything in Snowflake is controlled through role-based access control, so the same thing applies here. So let's go scroll down. And the first thing we're going to do is read our data. We have this finance and economics data set from the Snowflake marketplace that we were able to pull in uh, straight into our database. So we're going to be able to use that. And there is a specific stock price time series table that we're going to be using Pandas to do some transformations with. So the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to read that data in. So we can use this pd.read underscore Snowflake to be able to just point to where our table lives. And I provided the database, the schema, and the table name. And that converts that into a, a pandas data frame that we can be able to use and do transformations on. And I also just added in some logic here to be able to show you how fast it is. Now, this table create has about 75 million records in it, and we were able to read that 
in 10 seconds with Snowpark Pandas. Now, if you compare this to native pandas, you can see it takes, it takes a little long. Um, I started this maybe about a minute or so ago, and it is still running. Um, and here we're being able just where we have to pull that data outside of Snowflake and to be able to read that in. And you can just see that this is going to take, you know, way longer. This is already at 1 minute 40 seconds compared to when we were doing it above. It took just 10 seconds to read a table. And yep, you can see it finished and it took 105 seconds just to read that data using native pandas versus Snowflake pandas was 10 seconds. So, you know, you could do a quick quick math there. It's about a 10, 10x performance gain. So now let's go ahead and examine the raw data just to see what it looks like. Um, and we're using the pd.head function to be able to just get out the first five rows in that data set. And we can see, again, it's very financial information about the exchanges, the variables, the ticker, and the values there too. So to filter that data, which is a very, very common data transformation with Pandas, um, it's the exact same code. We're just using the data from logic and brackets, and we're just filtering for the New York Stock Exchange code. And we can be able to do that in, in Snowpark Pandas, and it took 3.4 seconds to be able to pull that, all those records there. Um, and this is, again, from those 75 million records in that table. So this is on large data. Let's try to add some even more granular filters. And we'll filter for the pre-market open of stocks that have the following tickers, Google, Microsoft, and Snowflake. And when we do that and add in those additional filters, again, using that same familiar syntax, it takes 1.3 seconds to iterate over those 75 million rows. So we can see we're just using that same developer-friendly API that we're everyone knows and loves, but we're just using the Snowflake compute power to be able to process this. Now, there are a number of functions and APIs um, that have parity with Snowflake and Pandas, um, including be able to create very computationally expensive pivot tables that takes about 10 seconds in Snowflake Pandas to be able to do. Uh, you know, if you do this with 75 million rows in, in native Pandas, that would just lead you to an out of memory error. Additionally, you can be able to do resampling, you can be able to get minimums of all the different tickers there too, and be able to import and export that out here, just the result set. Again, as you see, all of these different transformations take less than a second or just a couple seconds to be able to do, versus in native pandas, you're talking minutes, maybe hours before it just fails. So we're getting in a faster time to value for these data engineering pipelines, um, but also saving on costs because Snowflake, you only pay for what you use. If, only, if it's only going to take a couple of seconds, just pay for this couple of seconds with a minimum 60 second warehouse usage. And we're just using that standard Snowflake virtual warehouse to be able to run these computes on. Um, and you don't have to be able to manage or configure any clusters or anything like that. Snowflake just takes care of that under the hood. So all the same Snowflake features you love will also be able to interoperate with Snowpark Pandas. So there are more functions and you can be able to, uh, there's a comprehensive documentation over exactly, you know, what the parity is, um, but you can also be able to use within Snowflake notebooks or visualizations. So being able to take in the large data, aggregate it, and also be able to use open source visualization package, just like, Alt like Altair. So hopefully with this demonstration, you were able to see how we can unlock the power of Snowflake for Pandas developers by allowing you to run the same Pandas API while operating on large data sets, which in native Pandas would just give you an out of memory error. And again, all this data and all these transformations that we're doing it stays in Snowflake. We're not exporting this out. We're not being able to lose the governance and, and lineage that is associated with the Snowflake futures. And again, to learn more, you can definitely check out our documentation, uh, but also look into Snowflake Quick Starts and search for pandas on there, and you'll be able to run this exact same thing. So I hope you enjoyed that presentation 
and a demonstration of how we were able to use pandas on Snowflake and make things run just so much faster uh, while not you know, jeopardizing security and scalability as well. So again, hope you enjoyed it. You can check out the documentation, but also look into our quick starts as well and be able to try it out today in your Snowflake account. Thanks everybody. Thank you.